I'll sit down if you wish. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this first full council meeting of the year, first of the decade, January 15th, 2020. Please can I ask all councillors to use the microphones when speaking and remind you that the meeting is being streamed live. Also can I advise all meeting attendees that we are not expecting a fire alarm, but in the event one sounds, please make your way to the bottle of notes opposite Mima near, um, via the nearest fire escape. Thank you. I'll just follow that up with uh, remind members of the public that this is a business meeting of the council and whilst members of the public are welcome to attend and listen to the debate, they are not allowed to call out or disrupt the meeting. If any member of the public interrupts the meeting, they'll be issued with a warning. If they proceed to interrupt the meeting, they'll be asked to leave. Thank you. Right, so we'll start with uh, item number one which is apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies for absence? Uh, yes, Chair, there are apologies from councillor, councillors Arundel, Branson, Goodchild, councillor C. Hobson, J. Hobson, Jones, McTighe, Udin, Waters and McIntyre. Do you have any other, any other apologies from the floor now? Excellent, thank you. Right, we'll move on to item number two, declarations of interest. Um, do we have any declarations of interest? Excellent. Move on to item number three. Um, the council minutes from the 23rd of December. Uh, I'll move the minutes to be received as a correct record. Can I have a seconder? Thank you very much. You get that, yeah? Excellent. Speedily move along to item number four. Announcements and communications. There haven't been any. Is that true? Excellent. Item number five, questions um, from a member of the public. Um, I would like to invite Mr. Robson to put his question um, and then invite the Mayor to respond to his question. Um, Mr. Robson, I will say no supplementary questions will be allowed, so once you've asked your question, get your answer and then that would be great. Mr. Robson, would you like to ask your question? Can the Mayor or the Executive Member for Finance and Governance tell those victims of Stanhope Castle School when they are likely to be updated on the progress of matters following the independent inquiry on child sexual abuse recommendations? I'd like to respond. Hello, Mr Robson. Thank you for that. Um, due to the nature of this, we've got very strict guidelines from, uh, from lawyers and from insurers, so I'm going to read out a statement. The Council passed a motion asking for an update on the Council's involvement in the independent inquiry on child sex abuse at its meeting in August. The Exec Member for Finance and Government, Governance provided that update as part of her Exec Member's report at the last Council meeting on the 23rd of December. You can find a copy of the update in her report on the website or I'm happy to arrange for it to be provided to you. Uh, I'd repeat again that on behalf of Middlesbrough Council, our great sympathy for those who've suffered any abuse, whether physical, sexual or mental, any such abuse is abhorrent. We will continue to follow the progress of the inquiry and to manage the civil claims of victim stroke survivors who came forward seeking compensation in a prompt, prompt and sensitive way. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robson. Right, we shall move on to um, item number six, uh, the Mayor's Statement and Report. I'd invite the Mayor to um, make his report. Okay, thank you. I'm going to be, uh, I've got to read something else out now. It's not normal for me to do this, but uh, I have to make it clear that exec member reports are not here tonight. Uh, and this is the reason that members, uh, the last council meeting was 23rd December 2019, which was not that long ago. And the reports for this meeting would have had to go out 
two weeks after that. Uh, given there was only a two-week gap between the December meeting and the papers going out for this meeting and the fact it was the Christmas period, I decided that given the time scales involved to defer the reports to the March meeting. That's the first thing. Uh, I'm now going to give you seven points and we'll try and get them through really quickly. So, um, first of all, uh, I want to talk about the budget. The budget's coming up uh, very soon. We've got a challenge. Uh, What's really interesting is that we're soliciting public opinion, probably for the first time ever. I know there are always public consultations on budgets. Everyone claims that. Well, so far, our consultation, our genuine consultation, has received 700 pieces of feedback. 700 people have bothered to go onto the website and, and actually use an online form, which is fantastic. Last year, we're only halfway through the consultation, by the way, so whether that gets to 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000, I don't know. Last year, do you know how many people submitted feedback? 17, one seven. So this is real consultation. And what I promise is this. I promise we're in a tough spot. I promise we're going to have to do something. I promise we might have to consider real changes to the way we do things. But I also promise we're going to listen. The last thing that any of us in this room want to do is significantly change people's jobs, careers, or futures. That's the last thing we want to do. And another thing that we really, really don't want to do is change public services. But because of the situation we're in, all of that is in the mix. And when we get more feedback, and I stress last year 17 people gave feedback, this year we're heading towards thousands. When we get more feedback, I'm going to look at all that, and I'm going to come back with a, re with a formal proposal. That's the number one, the budget. Number two is about crime and security. Now, our, our wardens that I've talked about forever, but it's taken a long time to get the money, to, to recruit them, to train them, and get them ready, they're actually out there now. And this is what we are doing. We are tracking down known dealers. We are watching them. We're talking to people who give us information. And we are doing everything we can to expose them. And personally, I would like to see these people who blight communities effectively kill people, damage communities, destroy futures, and hurt jobs. I want to see them locked up. And if they can't be prosecuted and penalized and put sent to prison, I want to see them go and live somewhere else. And, and, and what we're going to do is try and gather the evidence to get them locked up. And if we can't, we're just going to keep, keep hassling them. We're just going to keep following them. We're just going to keep on top of the situation. We're going to make a real difference to this town. We're already making real headway. We're going to see a real change. If you want to see a community that's changing, Look at one of the most challenged communities in the whole of England. Arguably, the poorest council ward in the whole of England is North Ormsby, which is half a mile from here as the crow flies. It remains challenged. In the last six months, right, crime, year on year, month on month rather, has dropped. The place is cleaner. It's still got massive issues. And if you talk to residents, they're frustrated, they're angry, and they want help. But actually, the feedback that's coming in is starting to become more and more and more positive. And do you know what's made the difference? Do you know what's made the difference in North Ormsby? It's intolerance of bad behavior. There's a councillor who's not here tonight called Ashley Waters. I'll tell you about Ashley. He is out on those streets every single day walking around. Do you know what he's doing? He's telling people off. He's chatting to people, he's picking up litter, he's showing other people how to do it. And if ever there was a model on how to be a counsellor, how to look after your community, how to make changes, look at Ashley Waters. And if you don't believe me, look at the crime stats and look at how clean the place is now compared to 12 months ago. The last counsellor, right, not naming him, the last counsellor was a party political animal who was more interested in waving flags than getting his hands and feet dirty, right? What we need is we need people who do stuff, and we're going to do stuff. Well, that's great. You sound... Okay, apart from the fact you're not addressing the chair, apart from that you're interrupting, you sound like a very good counsellor. 
Number four is potholes, right? Every Sunday I get emails on potholes. Every Wednesday night I get Facebook messages on potholes. It's, 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 it's the biggest single issue that I face and have to deal with. So I promised that I would come up with a plan. I haven't been able to do that as quickly as I would have liked. So what I've done, I've asked Anthony, the deputy mayor, to come up with a plan. He's got a brilliant idea, which he's working on, and he's costing. He's working with Councillor McCabe, our Dennis, and between them, in the next two weeks, they will announce a plan to deal with potholes in the town. Now, wherever you live, you will receive some communication telling you what we're up to. What we cannot do is remove and improve every single tiny hole across the borough. But what we can do is tell you when we're going to deal with the major issues where you live and wait two weeks and that will come. Number five is about schools and education. I'm going to visit every single school in our borough within the next 12 months. Ideally, before term ends this calendar year, so before the end of July. I'm going to meet with staff, learn from them, I'm going to meet with pupils, I'm going to listen to them, I'm going to talk to them, I'm going to get ideas on how to do things better. I want to see how we can inspire them to do better in exams, contribute more, have more viable careers, and really change their own lives and their communities. Number six is about green issues. Uh, I, I'm on a mission this year to do lots in that regard, and what we're going to have in the next seven days in a, is an announcement of some new policies, new ideas, and new ways of doing things that will vastly reduce plastics use in our town and begin to turn the tide. Number seven, I've been challenged on social media uh, uh, and, and by some politicians uh, about, because I keep using the phrase decent people. So I, I want to define what a decent person is because I, I actually think it's, I'm going to use the word bloody, it's bloody obvious what a decent person is. A decent person is someone who joins in their community or wants to join in their community. A decent person plays by the rules. A decent person wants to contribute. People who pollute their environment with crime and with abuse, people who bring their area down, people who cost us a fortune and cost jobs and futures are not decent people. And the people who aren't decent, the people who pollute our town, I would urge them to accept our help, to become better, and to contribute. And if you won't, then we'll take action. We're on the side of decent people, and we will fight for decent people, and we'll make this town so much better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can that be noted? Thank you. Can I um, invite any members who wish to put any questions or make any comments um, on that to come forward? Councillor Storey. Thanks, Chair. Um, pick up on a few things the Mayor's mentioned there. Um, the first thing is the, the budget. Um, I appreciate the fact that there's a lot of uh, correspondence coming to the council. It's a good thing. I think the more we see people engage with the consultation, the better. I think we can all be very pleased to hear from the mayor that we've had a lot of um, responses to the consultation. Um, but he shouldn't stand up and say that it's the first time ever and glibly throw lines around like that because that's not true. Uh, consultations have been done in the past. If every single time, in fact, there's been a budget, we've had significant consultation online in community centres and hubs, public meetings, um, and uh, people can always put things in right into the council um, in tr traditional ways. Um, if this consultation goes better than others in the past, then great, good. I, I hope it does, and I think everyone in this room would hope that it does. Um, I certainly um, would like to hear from as many people as possible. There's a lot of very significant um, budget savings have been proposed in the um, uh, budget proposals thus far, so I think people should have their say, and I think a lot of people will be concerned about some of the proposals. Um, but I think it's just important that we don't go so far as to say this is the first time we've done anything or that this is tremendously um, different from what's gone in the past. If it's working better, great, and if we can learn from that, then fantastic, but let's not, let's not say things that aren't true. Um, I think North Ormsby is, is a good point to raise. I think I'm glad you've you raised that in terms of how it's improved. Um, 
One of the things that you didn't mention, which I think everyone on this side of the chamber is certainly very supportive of, is selective landlord licensing, which has been a, a big success in North Ormsby. It has worked very well, and that does improve um, standard of living in terms of housing. Um, it also reduces crime and antisocial behaviour and other issues too. Um, and what we would like to see is selective landlord licensing rolled out across the town. Um, it's happening in Newport. We'd like to see it happen in other wards, my ward, and other places. Um, that have significant amounts of private sector landlords and make sure that those benefits feed through to everybody. Um, I'm really disappointed that you had to resort to personal attacks, particularly on people who aren't here to defend themselves. Um, people on this side of the chamber, we do criticise um, the, the, the mayor from time to time, we do criticise the executive from time to time, um, we criticise the government, but it's never personal. It's never about individuals. We don't name people and say, you're a bad councillor, you're a good councillor. We don't do that. Um, and I think it would be good if everybody in this place did the same thing and didn't name people and criticise people, because you might not have said his actual name out loud, but we know who you're talking about. Um, I work very closely with the former councillor for North Ormsby, and I know how hard he worked, and I know how dedicated he was to his ward. And I think it's really offensive, um, actually, to, to me, for you to say those things. Um, and I think you should apologise. Um, I'd be interested to see what this pothole strategy is um, and how different it is from what's gone before. Um, I think you should go into every school in the town and see what's going on in the schools. I think the crisis in funding and education is massive. And I think you'll be hearing from head teachers, um, as we did during the um, general election and the local elections, that funding is, is a huge issue and that parents are effectively having to pay for the upkeep of schools. And that's utterly wrong. Um, and I hope you'll be taking that case to the government. Um, the environment, that's about the third time I think I've heard the Mayor say that there's lots of exciting things coming along the line about how we're going to make the town the greenest place ever. I think it'll be really interesting if he actually put some flesh on the bones of that and we heard the detail because thus far I've, I've not seen a lot of evidence of exactly what that means and I think we'd all like to hear what that actually does mean in practice. Um, I see we've got 1,200 trees. Um, there's that's 8,800 left to go. And the final thing me? I'd like to say about decent people, you mentioned about Thank decent you. people and, and defining decent people. Please don't put people into boxes. Please don't divide this town into good people and bad people because some of the people you would define as bad have deep-seated social issues that need addressing and that's part of your job. So when you stand up and you divide people in that way, I think it's dangerous and I think you should be very careful how you articulate yourself. Would the uh, mayor like to respond? Yes, thank you. Hi, a few things, right. First of all, uh, I absolutely will not apologise. I think that uh, what we need is we need politicians, councillors, activists that are out there on the street doing stuff. We do not need people waving flags and shouting party rhetoric. And Ashley Waters, I cite him and I will name him because I'm happy to. Ashley is an example of a fantastic councillor who's picking up litter, scolding people who are misbehaving, championing good people and working with the community. And that's the first thing. Selective licensing in North Ormsby was not a success. It really wasn't. What is a success now in North Ormsby is closing houses down where people are buying and selling drugs, all night parties and fighting machetes. That is what is improving North Ormsby and keeping it cleaner. That's the real difference there. That's all I'm going to say. Any other members like to put a question or make a statement to the Mayor? Councillor Lowey. Chair, I really would entreat you as a decent citizen to stop using inflammatory, inciting, dangerous language. It is appalling. I've talked to you about this before in the press. It's become apparent. And I don't think you really understand what inflammatory language is and how it can damage people, communities, homes and families. You continuously choose to use language that's inappropriate. And personally, I don't think any decent citizen would spend their time when we are meant to be modeling good behaviors by inciting, discouraging people from being well behaved by the way you speak about them. As Matthew said, this is appalling to want to put people into boxes and decry them. There are criminals in our town. There are services to deal with them. It's not for us to put people in boxes and decry them in the way that you are. I think you really need to reflect on how you speak about people and how you talk about crime. Secondly, I think that it's wonderful that we have consultation on the budget and that we listen to people. However, what worries me about all that is what difference will it make if we don't act on what people's reactions are? We need to analyse and evaluate their responses and then not just put them to one side and do what we want to do anyway, because you could argue the consultation then is just a sham. And part of me wonders if that's what it's all about, talking all the good talk about consultation, but in the end doing whatever the choices are of the mayor and whoever else is going to make the choices. Thank you.
Thank you, Councillor. May I like to respond? Okay, thank, thank you. you. I mean, a couple of things there. First of all, this really is the first time there's been proper, and I say the word carefully, proper consultation. The fact there were 17, 17 inputs from the public last year, clearly consultation did not happen in a, an appropriate manner. When you're talking about millions of pounds of public money, secondly, you accuse me of, of not understanding inflammatory language. With respect, it's yourself that doesn't understand what inflammatory language is. If you think me calling some people decent or not decent is inflammatory, my word, do you need to wake up. Thanks very much. Councillor Coe. Um, recently, we spoke to the police, and actually, they cited that there's been a 30% reduction in crime in the landlord licensing area of Newport, um, and they entirely put that down to the fact that we started to introduce landlord licensing and the massive impact that it had on that community. Um, so when we say that North Armsby wasn't down to selective landlord licensing, I think we probably need to revisit that, maybe take a look at what the police are saying in Newport, because they're claiming 30% reduction down to selective landlord licensing. Thank you, Chris. I think that uh, there might be slightly crossed wires here. Uh, selective licensing was introduced in North Ormsby some time ago, and it was introduced in a different way that it's now been introduced into Newport Stroke Gresham. North Ormsby's improvement is not about selective licensing. In my considered opinion, having looked at it and seen what it did for the first, first months of its existence, uh, I agree that crime and the situation in Newport appears to be improving, although people who live there won't agree, but, but I think statistically it is. I think the place is slightly cleaner. I think well done to all the council staff. But I think it's also well done to the politicians who are now finally starting to take a stand and saying we're not going to put up with bad behaviour, we're going to chase the bad people, and we're going to make a difference, and we're going to champion and look after those whose lives are blighted by criminals and troublemakers. Councillor. Councillor Higgins. Thank you, Chair. Can I just say that for the third time, I'm asking you, you won the election, fine, great. What, what Ashley's doing in North Ormsby, great. So did the other councillor do lots of hard work. So do we all do lots of hard work, and I'm sure the people on that side we go out litter picking, we go out talking to our communities. So it's not just one councillor, it's quite a lot. And I think it's about time now that if you really intend to want people to work together to stop, please stop going on about what we didn't do, in your opinion, what we didn't do and what we should have done and how you're going to improve it. If you improve anything in the town, great, I'll be the first one to shout, and so will we all. That's fabulous, but we are sick, and the people out there are getting fed up of hearing it as well. Because it just sounds so childish now. You've said it that many times, it just sounds childish. So, you know, get on with what needs to be done, and stop looking in the past and look to the future. Because that's what we want here a better place for the people of Middlesbrough, and so does everybody else. So to keep going on and getting people's backs up, and you know what you're doing, because you can see it in your face when you see it, so please stop doing it. Right, um, may I like to respond? You to respond to yeah, that? Thank you for that. Listen, um, I'm, I'm honestly baffled by what you said. As someone who has actively championed what you do as a councillor, and what several people over there and several people over here do as councillors, I've actively championed them. So, so what you're saying seems really odd, and I guess you must be feeling very defensive, and perhaps I, I have to take some responsibility for that, but I have literally championed you and several people on that side several people on this side, and just because I name and I'm proud of what one person has done, doesn't mean that I don't like you, and so please don't be defensive. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Right, guys, we're going to move on. Um, we're getting off, off point now. We're going to move on. Is it about the same thing, councillor? Can we make it quicker? Thank you, Chair. 
I'd like to say that the consultation mostly has worked because a lot of us have actually encouraged all of our residents to actually fill those consultations in. I myself have actually encouraged so many people through my own social media site, as you have you done. And I've seen it and I've used it and I've passed it and shared it. So that's past, part, partly because we've actually done that as well. So we do work with you. Another thing I'd like to say is that education a few years back, academies came into force, and a lot of us councillors, as, and, all, and there's other councillors here, were taken off the school's governors because it was seen that it would be better for academies not to have councillors on their governing bodies. It's very hard to get on a governor's body. I was actually a chair, of, a chair of governors at one of my local schools for seven years. So I took part and encouraged all the children. I used to see the children outside. They respected me because of that. That seems to have been lost now, that community link between the schools and the community. That's something that we should get back. However, that's academies for you, i.e. businesses. Another thing I'd like to know, is and Councillor High now, executive member, is he the new pothole czar now? Um, because he was the drug star, he's now the pothole czar. Do we have a hotline to him now with our potholes? Because I know years ago we used to have a pothole a pothole hotline, which, which is quite successful, I think. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, continue because the potholes got worse, because the weather's got worse, and the state of the roads are bad, not just in our local area, quite nationally. So let's try our best to all work together on that. I expect to see you up there with your barrow and measuring the potholes before you try and fill them in, Councillor. OK, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay, can I, I just, uh, just dead quick? Right. So, first of all, yeah. For any councillor, any person, any member of the public that's out there, encouraging others to get involved and feedback on the consultation, that's brilliant. So, well done, uh, Councillor Walker and everyone else who's involved. Yes, we want academies and all schools to be far more involved in the communities. And I'm actually going to raise that point then about councillors getting on the boards and having input. I'm going to raise that when I see them. The last point, I guess, for the next two weeks, he is literally the potholes are, but, um, but he actually did an incredible job. He reshaped some of our services, and result, which resulted in better services for vulnerable adults, and it will save a lot of money. So, so he did an incredible job earlier in, in, in our seven month, eight month uh, period of power, and I think for the next two weeks, he's gonna do a fantastic job. So thank you for acknowledging him. Right guys, we are gonna move on now to item number seven. Uh, on the agenda, which is um, the calculation of the council tax base for 2021. Uh, I'm going to invite the mayor to present this. Um, so I believe that I just read this out. I believe that uh, it, it would actually be uh, the exec member for finance who cannot be here tonight. So I request that members agree the recommendations contained in the report. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Right, that's to be voted on. So, first off, we'll take votes for. Everyone for. And please raise your hand. And those against, please. Excellent, that's carried, thank you. So we move on to item agenda number eight, which is the Local Council Tax Support Scheme 2021. Again, I invite the Mayor to present. Uh, that's the same thing, I request that members approve the Council Tax Support Scheme for 2020-2021. That is to be voted on. Again, I invite all those to accept for, raise your hands please. And those against, please. Carried, thank you. Brings us swiftly on to item number nine, which is the uh, priorities of the elected mayor of Middlesbrough and Strategic Plan 2023. Again, I invite the mayor to present it. 
Uh, again, I request that members approve the priorities from the revised strategic plan for 2020 to 2023, setting out how the Council will contribute to the delivery of the priorities. Again, that's to be voted on. So all those who are in favour. Yes, of course. Yes. Would, would you like to comment, Councillor? Do we take the vote first or comment? Right. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just, just a couple of points, really. Um, this is a really, really important document. It's, it's something that informs and sets the Council's direction. It informs on how we spend our money. It's a tool to measure our performance. And it's also something that we measure through scrutiny, because when we look at our scrutiny topics, within the different scrutiny panels, one of the questions we ask ourselves is how does this fit into the Mayor's priorities? So when we've looked through this, um, there are lots of things in there that are good, there are things that we're not going to you know, disagree with, um, we're going to support. However, there are some areas I think that could be strengthened and I'd quite like the Mayor's uh, response on this. I think the detail on partnership working could be stronger. There is no references to some of the partnerships that we actually have and operate. So things with 13, for example, and how we develop our houses, um, work with the college and the university and the work that we do there. And there's very little detail on targets as well, because if we're going to be able to measure this, we have to see what we're measuring it against. And I think I'd like to see that fleshed out if that's possible. Um, things like new jobs are referenced in there, but there's no measure about how many new jobs and new businesses will be created and how will improvements in health be measured. We talked about this yesterday in one of the scrutiny panels, um, looking at whether health and obesity was fitting into the planning regulations and how that filtered through to some of the other policies, which is the wider discussion. It is actually in the plan, but I'd like to see that uh, expanded on. And one of the other things that really is, is kind of something that bothers me a lot and it's something I'm quite passionate about, we've got a 12% BME community in Middlesbrough and I found the report quite light on equality and diversity. Um, we have the largest BME community in the Tees Valley in Middlesbrough and I'd like to see within the plan detail of how our different cultures can contribute to this vision. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Do you want to respond on that? Or not? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, next question, um, Councillor Marston. Thank you, Chair. Um, the question is really, or the comments about the um, transforming the town centre and everything with it. Um, Ray Mallon described Middlesbrough with the engine room. The town centre is the engine room. I agree that there was the need for the town centre to be improved, but I think he tended to forget about the outskirts of Middlesbrough. The outskirts of Middlesbrough have a lot to, be, to offer the town, offer the people visiting Middlesbrough. And so we shouldn't forget, while working hard to improve the town centre and make it more attractive, don't forget the attractions that are in the outskirts of Middlesbrough. Um, now, some years ago, plans were in place to, to make, have Middlesbrough recognised as the sub-regional centre Newcastle being the regional centre and Leeds the other one. Um, for some reason, those plans failed, died, or whatever happened to them. But can we make every effort to have this done? Middlesbrough, I'd say Middlesbrough now is the sub-regional centre for this, re this area. Let's work to make it recognised as a sub-regional centre. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cook. My question is on page 10, um, people, number one, tackling crime and antisocial behaviour head on, um, and it's really about, just about the last sentence, um, trouble causers who refuse to conform will be kicked out of their homes and moved on, which is something that the Mayor alluded to earlier. Um, I've been on raids with the police, I've helped clear, clear information from residents to help with the problem streets such as Portman, and for me the answer is not as simple as just move people on. 
our neighbouring authorities already do this and they all end up in our, my ward. Um, recently someone was moved on, um, as it were, four houses down, um, which meant that they just drug dealt in between. Um, we have countless shared houses and often there is a problem. Often when there is a problem, I could probably guess the housing provider in two tries. Why are we not implementing a limit on these types of properties and also demanding that the current ones raise their standards and house people appropriately to give people the best chance to improve their lives, rather than, in some examples, housing those in recovery with those with current substance abuse problems? Councillor Walker. Thank you, Chair. Just one point about the actual document itself. Is this actual document going to go out to the public? This document? Uh, yes, it's publicly available. Can I just make a point, being somebody who has to wear glasses? I do find the print quite small. And um, perhaps if some of the photographs were a bit smaller and the print a bit larger, that people would understand it better and see it better. Uh, it is quite a small print. I mean, people who've got 2020 vision, brilliant. Well done. Thank you very much. I wish I had. Maybe I had once, but not now. But I do honestly believe that some of the print in my copy, anyway, is very, very small. So perhaps that could be addressed, at least thought about, please. Shrink your photographs, improve the print, and then everybody will be able to read what you're talking about. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good point, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Furness. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just the, you mentioned about the housing and infrastructure, um, and you don't mention about buses or how to improve buses or how to improve walking, cycling. You mentioned also about the direct link to London for 2020. Is that even possible now? I don't think the, the infrastructure could be built in that time. Um, so I just I'm sort of disappointed, really, that you know you there's nothing in there about improving cycling, walking and buses, because you do mention at one point uh, in the environment that you want to encourage people to use public transport and cycle and walking, but there's nothing in there that actually says you want, you're going to do something about it. Thank you. Do you like to respond? Um, yeah, I will, I, will, um, I will respond to that one. It's a constructive uh, uh, criticism, thank you. Um, do you know what, this is uh, the, the best comment is, is the small print. It is really small. We need to address that. Thank you. Um, I think everything that was said is, is, needs to be thought about. I think, in truth, this is a document that is meant to give people uh, a, a, an overview, a feel. It isn't meant to spell out detail. And if we tried to do that, it wouldn't get read, apart from the people in here and a hundred others. We need something that the public will uh, respond to and absorb. So... Uh, we're not going to put in all the detail that everyone wants. I take on board your points about the buses and the cycling, and, and they are important to me and to everyone in here, and we are going to do stuff about that. But genuinely, when we're putting out a document for public consumption, we have to make sure that there are, are going to be two versions available. One is like this, which gives people a sense of what we're about and what we're aiming to do, and there's loads of detail available if people want to get in touch. There could, there'll be lots of backup documents. But this is about something that sits on a shelf that people can look, browse over, and get the gist of really quickly. This isn't meant to be something that politicians argue about all day. Does that make sense? Thank you. Right, that moves on to item number 10 on the agenda. I heard your items was non-received, I believe. Sorry? Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, um... Sorry about that, guys. Item number nine. Back to item number nine. Is a vote. It's to be voted on. Um, the, uh, the, priorities the, elected, the priorities of the elected mayor and Middlesbrough strategic plan 2023 needs to be voted on. All those in agreement? All those no, against. Thank you very much. That's carried, that's agreed. 
Now we can move on to item number 10. No urgent items, there's no urgent items, is there? Nope, excellent. Item number 11, which is members' question time. We've got four questions received. Um, first question is from Councillor Wright, and it's directed at Councillor Cooper. Uh, Councillor, can you read your question out for us, please? Thank you. Uh, despite repeated requests, we still haven't had any update on the outcomes for our town's young people in August exams. Can the executive member tell us when we can expect to hear about the outcomes from August 2019? Thank you, Councillor Wright. As your first two questions are uh, on education, you'll be pleased to know I've done my homework. Uh, repeated requests have had uh, updates. Unfortunately, they haven't changed since uh, the original requests were made. KS4 validated results are received by the council from the Department of Education on the 23rd of January. Therefore, our further update to council will be available in February. So we haven't had the results yet, so we can't give you them. Sorry. Supplementary council. Supplementary. Um, unfortunately, in previous administrations, the Head of Education has always provided the Executive Member with an update well ahead of January. Uh, my question was going to be, quite simply, given the Mayor's vision about improving uh, outcomes for our children, did Progress 8 scores improve across the town last year? Uh, unfortunately, it seems like you can't give me that answer. Thank you. Um, the planned opening of the new Outwood Riverside School in September 2020 will put... Yep. Okay. Um, th there's nothing more I can say. We haven't had the results, so I can't give you them. If you're suggesting that I've had the results and I'm not telling you, that's not correct. I just haven't had the results. Right, though. Thank you. We'll move on to the second question, which again is Councillor Wright, Director Councillor Cooper. My second question is, does Middlesbrough have enough secondary school places for all Middlesbrough children for September 2020? Thank you. I was tempted just to say yes, but I thought I'd uh, give you a bit more than that. The planned opening for the new Outwood Riverside School in September 2020 will provide an additional 150 places for Year 7 school places, which we, we believe will be sufficient to match demand for places from Middlesbrough children. We will have greater confidence about the level of demand by the end of February 2020, as this is when school place data is exchanged between all the local authorities. This will allow us to see expected demand for places from children who live outside the Middlesbrough. So we are reasonably confident, but obviously we can't say 100% at this moment in time. Okay? That is supplementary, Councillor Wright. Oh. Excellent, thank you. We'll move on to the third question, which again is from Councillor Wright. To Councillor Cooper. Thank you. The Middlesbrough Achievement Partnership has been instrumental in improving outcomes for young people across this town. Can the Executive Member reassure me that the MAP will receive proper funding it requires to ensure it continues to deliver for our children and for our schools? Right. Uh, Middlesbrough Achievement Partnership, MAP, was previously funded through Social Improvement Strategy. This funding was withdrawn in September 2019 as part of wider savings. The use of the funding was always to establish mechanisms for support and collaborative working that would be self-sustained by schools beyond the life of the strategy. And this remains the intention for our map. So it was never meant to be there permanently. A supplementary, councillor. Thank you. Um, school leaders across this town will be rightly concerned by the decline of our education service. Despite Redcar Authority hiring a deputy head of service for education and Stockton Authority hiring a head of service, we are not hiring a specialist in education to lead our service. Has the council given up on our town schools? The one thing I don't do is give up on school children. We haven't given up on anything. Going back to your original question, the mechanism for reducing this funding started long before I came into office. Um, so I'm surprised you're actually asking me about that. <coughs> we have a new head of service for education. Do you have any problems with the head of service that we have? If, if, if so, just let me know. Jerry, so you get the right to reply directly since the council is asking me a question. Uh, no, I actually have no problem with our um, head of service. My question is, and I'll read it again for the councillor, Red Car Authority 
is hiring a specialist deputy head of service. Stockton Authority is hiring a specialist head of service. Middlesbrough Authority is maintaining under the Mayor's budget not to fill vacancies in our education department. Well, I think that's something we can always look at when we've got the budget sorted out. But right now, my answer is no, we're not. Excellent. That's Thanks, just right guys. Thanks. Can I just add something? There might be uh, a misunderstanding here. We, we have a head of service. So just to be clear. Yeah. Just to be clear, we, we do have a head of service for education. I think, I think what we need to do is pick this up outside the meeting because there might be some difference here in the terminology and what we mean by that. Yeah, right. Thank you, Councillor Wright and Councillor Cooper, for that uh, exchange. Um, the next question is from Councillor Coop, and it's directed at Councillor Smiles. Councillor Coop. Yeah, with the plans to develop Middlehaven, St Hilda's, are there any plans to bring the old town hall back to its former glory, as it is a vital part of our heritage and culture? I always do this, don't I? Can, can everybody hear me? Um, thank you very much for your question, Councillor Coop. Um, the old town hall is a really important part of our cultural heritage. Um, it's Grade 2 listed, it was built in the 1800s, and it's also where Gladstone dubbed Middlesbrough the Infant Hercules. Um, and there's a very famous Lowry painting as well of the old town hall. Um, as it stands, it's derelict, and it's a real sort of focal point for antisocial behaviour, like fly tipping, fires, drug taking even. Um, and I think it's a real source of shame, actually, that it's been left to rot in the way that it has. Um, it's been derelict, it's sort of been empty since 1996. Um, and when I've sort of dug deeper with officers, it soon becomes clear why this is the case. And it's because basically how much it's gonna cost even just to make the building safe. So it's gonna cost in the, region of a mil in the region of a million pound just to make it safe. And then obviously there's the refurbishment costs on top of that. Um, but like you say, it's in an area that's going to be redeveloped and we're going to be working closely with the developer, whoever that is, um, to bring forward ideas for the old town hall and hopefully bring it back to its former glory. Um, but something else that I, I always keep it in mind when I'm talking sort of um, community organisations and art organisations um, who are looking for premises because they could actually lever in um, grants and funding that we can't. And then one other thing that I was sort of looking for public re reaction and feedback from is I know that other local authorities have looked at crowdfunding and given it such like, like an emotive building really, um, I thought it was possibly something that we could look at. Um, but what we really are interested in is any sort of innovative ideas um, that the community has and Middlesbrough residents have for the old town hall. So thank you for your question. I hope I've gone somewhere to answering it. Thank you. Happy, councillor. Yes, please. Uh, the old town hall used to be a vital part. And in fact, in the early 1930s, school children walked from the old town hall to the new town hall. And I know this because my mother was one of them. So it, it is a vital part. I thank you for your uh, answer, but I really will be pursuing this and making sure that that does happen. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Right, that moves us on to um, item number 12. It's uh, a notice of a motion, and I'll invite Councillor Rostron to prevent it, uh, present it. Sorry. Middlesbrough achieved fair trade town status in 2007. Council reaffirms its support for fair trade and recognises the role of the Middlesbrough Fair Trade Group in promoting fair trade in Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough Council remains fully committed to using fair trade products, including tea, coffee and sugar, in meetings, at events and in public council venues. Sorry. Furthermore, the council will continue to promote and participate in the town's programme of fair trade events and activities. Middlesbrough Council also recognises the role fair trade plays in assisting producers in developing countries to address the impacts of climate change, for example through tree planting and water conservation schemes. So moved, Chair. Um, 
Do you get a second on that? Councillor Fairness, you want to, did you want to say something? Excellent. So that is to be um, to be voted on. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I will get used to this. I will. I promise. <laughs> Please. Just, um, at the last meeting, the mayor mentioned how important the, the um, oh sorry, how important the issue of climate change was, and indeed he's mentioned it again tonight. Um, and as I've said earlier, fair trade is a very important part of this because it's about sustainability, sustainable farming, sustainable production, sustainable living. And we got our fair trade town status in 2007, and we were very proud of that at the time because there were very few uh, towns had got it. And we held um, a conference last year, a northern region conference on fair trade, and people came from all over the country, not just from the northern region. And we, we, we were praised, uh, and the Fair Trade Foundation really did praise us for the work that we'd done and what we'd achieved. And what we have to do to maintain the fair trade town status, we have to reapply every two years, giving evidence to the Fair Trade Foundation. And one of the pieces of evidence is that the council supports fair trade. So what this motion is about is helping us to maintain our fair trade town status by showing that we as a council support fair trade and also, of course, the climate change situation. Thank you, Chair. First, you want to... Yeah, I was just going to add as well about the climate change and the fact that, obviously, you're saying the sustainability through fair trade um, to protect uh, our climate and protect, you know... So, yeah, I would just like to say that I think we should vote for this. <laughs> Councillor High. Thank you, Chair. Um, the principle and the concept of fair trade, I think we all agree with. Um, and we, we all have to play a part in, 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 as you say, in global warming and reaching out into, obviously, global issues right across. However, with the current climate that we're facing financially within the local authority, something that I'm consciously aware of is the additional cost that is associated to potentially purchasing and using fair trade. Now, whilst we are consulting within the budget and looking at various cuts and we potentially have uh, job losses within various departments, I'm, I'm wanting to draw some caution on potentially overspending in terms of tea, coffee and, and, and consumables when we don't really understand the financial implication that could be brought forward by just agreeing this motion. Now, I'm not saying I'm against the motion. What I am saying is it is lacking some critical data for us to make sure we make the appropriate decision within the chamber. And with the budget being under pressure and cuts being made right across, I just want us to make sure we don't have any detrimental impact on any future spend. The amendment that I would like to make is to refer this motion to the Chief Finance Officer so we can get appropriate consideration around the financial implications that could be set within the local authority. The taxpayer money now is as is, is, is vital as it's ever been. It's, a stretched, it's, it's, it's stretched further than it's ever been. And I just think we need to be careful about overspending in, in, in areas that we potentially don't need to. So my amendment is to, to send this to the financial officer for us to get appropriate input on the, the financial circumstances surrounding this potential motion. Thank you, Chair. Can we get someone second in that? The Met. Yep. Right, so we're going to take... Yes, yes, the Met. Really just say that um, I, I, your, your, your motion has come from the heart, and I think it's a... It's a great thing to do. Uh, I think we all believe in the ethos, the approach, and, and the aims of fair trade. Um, but I do believe that we should work out whether this is going to cost 30 quid or 3,000 pounds, and whether it means, does, it does say in your motion that it's going to be facilities in public buildings. So does that mean all the cafes that use council properties, are they obliged to use fair trade? If so, it'll affect the prices. So we're with you in your aims and your goals and what this is all about, but we, we do need the info before we commit public money. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, thanks, Chip. Um, I'd just like to say, I'm actually staggered that this has not just been agreed unanimously. I cannot believe... I cannot believe for a second 
that we are querying whether this council should have fair trade status or not. Fair trade status is an undeniably, unquestionably positive thing for this town. It's an, un right. it's an undeniably positive thing for the council as well. And one thing I would like to state no, is, Councillor High is an executive member. The mayor is the mayor of Middlesbrough. Why, prior to this meeting, have they not asked these questions? Why have they not said to officers, how much does fair trade cost? They've seen the papers, they've known this is going in. Why aren't they asking those questions and why, if they are so concerned about this in terms of the budgetary implications, why have they not put it in the consultation process? Why is this not a suggested saving? Why isn't this on the council's website? Right, council, Why vote are they coming now with this? I think it's vote, grandstanding. Vote. I think it's grandstanding. Vote against and I think it's unnecessary. Please. No, we're going we're gonna to vote on the amendment. Right, we're, we're going to vote on the amendment. If you don't agree with them, then vote against the amendment. Right, we're going to vote for... We're going to vote for Councillor High's amendment, yes? The Mayor seconded it, yes he did, yes. So all those for Councillor High's amendment, raise your hand. Right, all those against the amendment, raise your hand. Right, the amendment's declared lost. Yeah, this, this, the original, yeah. Right, now we're going to go back to a vote on the original motion. All those for, please raise your hand. Against, please raise your hand. It's declared carried. Thank you very much. Excellent. Right then, that moves us on to um, item 13. Uh, notice urgent of motions, none received. So that uh, leaves for me to formally close the meeting. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a safe journey home and good night.